Many sample makers of today look to Frank Dukes, Nami and Elhag as inspiration, but many cannot make vintage samples to sound so pure. In today's video, I'm going to show you some common mistakes as to why your samples are not as good and how to fix them. Bringing me on to repetition. I notice a lot throughout top sample makers production that instruments are coming in and out. So rather having all the instruments playing at once for like 32 bars like this, taking instruments in and out can give them more purpose or even adding transitions to your sounds like this. can really stop the sample from being boring. Or as Elhug suggests, look at how the vibraphone doesn't enter on the beat, but actually has some kind of small pickup bar. That's the kind of stuff that is gonna make your samples sound much more like original songs. Another big mistake that uses repetition is having bland chords and melodies. And ways to fix this is using voicing and using chords which are out the scale. So as you can see from this sample, I'm just using triads which give it less substance. Pairing it to this, I've used a lot of seventh chords and used voicing as you can see here. Then to give it a different colouring, producers like Frank Dukes like to use diminished and suspended chord. Chopping up samples can be a unique way to make samples interesting. Try and pull to one of your samples can give random textures and you can chop them up like this. So you can throw your samples in Fruity Slicer, press B, slice it up and put the attack and decay up. Then you can play in a random pattern like this. Next is quality sounds. Choosing high quality samples can be very crucial when making vintage samples, but this means you still have to use the sounds correctly. Using real instrument samples can sometimes be over-processed and sound unrealistic. There's VSTs like Reels, Abbey Rose Chambers and Sheps that can make these sound really real. To give yourself an overview of how to layer your sounds, I like to somewhat separate my sounds into three brackets. So you have the low end, the bass, the sub, core sounds, the pads, keys, then the high end sounds, which are like guitars, bells. Notice the difference between between these two examples, one with a higher piano and one with a lower piano. Notice how the core of the bass and the piano change. Moving on to a big factor, overproducing. A mistake I often see is adding too many counter melodies which are clashing like this. You could make this so much more cleaner by layering the bass notes with the higher vibratone. Another big factor when it comes to overproducing is that you do not need to apply every plugin and every technique that you see. Listen to the sound carefully, identify any problems, and choose the appropriate effects to fix this. So let's look at how panning can actually help this. So let's take these four instruments for an example. So now let's add some panning, make some mono and stereo. Notice how that frees up muddiness and just makes each individual sound more clear. Moving on to poor rhythm. Um, songs from the 60s or 70s where not everything was on the grid. A noticeable key from the top sample makers is they're using real instruments to make a humanized bounce. Playing in your keys themselves so they're slightly off the grid can really make them more natural like this.
which is always using old soul samples, as you can see here. Bassline is a crucial component of the vintage sound. This is good because it provides the foundation for the rhythm. And two things need to be taken in account for the velocity and the timing. But rather having a bass just playing like this, So either playing the bass yourself or with the MIDI so they're more realistic like this. And the same thing applies to drums as you can see in this song. Rather playing in your drums like this. You can play them in your MIDI to sound more natural like this. And to really get a nice rhythm to your sample, you can use ShaperBox. Just flick through the page of the presets and find the right one. And you can make cool rhythms just like this. So yeah, that is that for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the tips that I give you and you can apply these to your sound.